Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining uh, uh, our Power BI Days uh, Netherlands or Holland, whatever you prefer, uh, meetup. Um, today we have two amazing female speakers. One of them is Freddy that will start the session. Um, and afterwards we have a very short break and then Catherine will take over uh, and talk more about Power BI governance. Um, I'm not going to introduce these two ladies because I know that they can do much better themselves. So having that said, I want to uh, uh, give the floor to Preddy and uh, uh, start a presentation. Cool. Thank you. So I will, I will start, start sharing. sharing the screen. Shall I start the sharing the screen? Cool. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yep. So you can see my screen and I will start sharing my slides. Um, hello everyone. Welcome to Power BI this like Power BI Meetup Netherlands or Holland, how would you prefer? Um, to, uh, my session is the introduction to data visualizations and the design best practices. Uh, quick intro about me. Um, I am Prati Katyusha Kamasani, whoever can say that. I am from UK. I run um, London Power BI user group. I'm a Microsoft MVP and uh, I work as a Power Platform consultant and I do a bit of training as well. And I work as a consultant for Altius, which has been recently acquired by Avanad. And uh, those, that's my Twitter link and um, that's my blog, which I don't, I'm not blogging as often as I would love to. But uh, yeah, there are some blog posts there um, that you could go and uh, have a look. And um, there's something I haven't said, and I usually try to say this in the in the live sessions is um, oh, like, you know, I'm an amateur painter and a professional selfie taker. So this is most of the times so this brings a bit of giggle into the room. And it's like a, it's like an icebreaker when you're in an actual proper conference. But I think here it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'll quickly jump into the agenda. So um, this session, it's actually, when I did it last time, it was an hour session. Um, but when Nikki approached me, he said, um, okay, can, um, can we have a, like a 30 minute session or like a 30, 40 minutes? So I'm going to skip a few things in this session, but I'm, I'm anyway gonna provide the slides after the, after the session. So if you have, by all means, if you have any questions uh, about the missing topics or, if you have any questions, please do get in touch and I'm happy to explain. And uh, some things, if you have any questions, um, use the chat window, but I, I don't think I will be able to see the chat window. But if you if there is any questions that you really, really want to ask, yeah, just un unmute yourself. And if it's OK with the organizers, please unmute yourself and ask me questions. I think that's how it's going to we're going to have a bit of interactivity. And I will try to finish the session within half an hour. But uh, yeah, do stop me if I'm overrunning. Um, so for the agenda, what we have today is uh, we're going to look at what is the data visualizations and why data visualization is important. And then we, we're going to look at the science behind the effective data visualizations. And it, so this is where we basically think about, talk about is like a, how human brains work and how we interpret patterns and how understanding this science actually helps us to create the effective data visualizations. And, and at the same time, we also see some of the examples about how visuals can lie. And it, the, that's more about trying to understand those things helps us with the effective data visualizations. And uh, I also have a, a few slides about various types of data and choosing the right visuals. So again, because it's there is a lot of content, I'm not gonna talk about every single type of data visual, data visualizations and the data types and stuff like that. But what I'm gonna give you is, I'm gonna give you some good references where which can help you with your day-to-day -day reporting. So I hope that's good as I cannot see anyone. So I'm assuming you all are saying yes. So uh, to start with, this is something. So as I said, I do uh, data visualizations training and I always try, start my, when I do my training, this is the co uh, quote I always start on. So if you're somebody who cares about design or 
like you know it when i say design it it's not about data visualization design it could be anything like if you're creating an app or you're creating a a a car or anything if you're somebody who cares about this design then i would totally recommend books by don norman and why this quote here is by the end of this 30 minutes like you know by the end of this session you probably won't be creating like you know perfect dashboard but what the aim of this one is at least you we won't create bad designs we may not create the perfect designs but well, i in my opinion there is no perfect but at least we try not to create bad designs so that's and uh, i'm hoping this session will give you some of those and like you know motivate you to not to create those bad designs so as far as our agenda let's see what is data visualization before we actually go to that i'm sure many of you heard this like you know knowledge is power but when it comes to organizations and the um and the places where we are working it has become data is power when you have the data as an organization if you're in a retail company if you have data you are powerful but how we can actually make the data powerful and uh, we can make the data powerful by making the data accessible but when we say accessible it's not like you know having the all the data in the data warehouse or database and then you plug in an excel file and you have a lot of you provide this data accessible to the users that's not how we're going to make it powerful we're going to make it powerful by communicating it well and um, the communication is what makes the data visualization better so i'm not sure how many of you like if any one of you have seen this so this is a this is from a news reporting so a news reporter showing about a storm and um, it's basically they're using the data visualization basically what they they're talking about she's talking about a very depressing situation but very effectively once you see it you will remember it for very long time and also you can easily understand the depth of of the water and that is because it's the, it's she's just communicating it very well and um, that is where it is important um having the data visualization why because in the place where we are now is very important to talk about the data visualization um sorry <laughs> i thought somebody has a question okay so why it because we are in a situation we are in a place in our organizations where the data is coming from like you know various vol volumes and different velocity and the different type of variety of data the user wants to see all the data the user wants to communicate with all the data and they want to access all the data they want to understand the the insights in the data and um, back in a day big data was a big deal but now we i think we are in a in a place where data is actually overwhelming so that's when data visualization and the storytelling is more important than ever and that's why basically we are doing this um, this session so when we say data visualization data visualization is not new we have been doing the data visualizations like for a very long time so for people around this side, like in netherlands and germany and all those things people i'm sure because when i say around here because i come from originally from india and this is this is not something i've i've known when i was like in india except a bit of in history lessons but this is data visualization this is this comes from 1812 and this is like a this has been considered as one of the oldest data visualization and which explains the statistical um information very well so this as you can see in this particular data visualization you can see how the day how the troops have started and went all the way over and when they came back how the size has changed and over the timeline on in the in the bottom you could see like there is axis where they talk about the timeline and also different temperatures and how the temper the low the temperature gone how it impacted on the troop size and this has been like you know it's in the 1812 
And just by looking at it, even somebody who is not familiar with this whole story, I could understand very well. So several decades later, this has been used like everywhere as one of the best statistical example from the history. So the entire data visualization is not new, but why it is so important now compared to previously and why data visualization is, is a core concept when we are communicating with the with our business users now is because um, the whole, how the business users are accessing the data and uh, the, the expectations has changed. So now nowadays, the business users are expected to respond issues rapidly. So like, you know, in, in the older days, like, well, it's when I say olden days, like it's just like, you know, for a few years ago, the, the business users were not expected to respond to things like, you know, there is a question you need to respond immediately. That was not the case any previously. But like, you know, nowadays how it is, is somebody fires a complaint on the Twitter and you expect a response immediately. So that's when the data visualization is also going to be helpful. The like, you know, to have the data accessible about whatever, like outage or anything. And also, irrespective of the sizes, like, you know, what size we are, what type of the data, the business user are expecting to see, like, you know, that, that's where the, the expectations are changed. Whatever the size the business user is expecting to be, crunch the data, give the output immediately, show me the insights very, like, immediately. And also, why the... Uh, what data visualization also gives is it helps you to understand the patterns. So by having the really good data visualizations, you will be able to see the patterns in your data very quickly. And even the very, very complicated data makes sense very easily by using the data visualizations. And that's what business users are also expecting. As a, as a business user or like, you know, as an exec or everyone, is the expectation is changed and to follow that expectation, data visualization is something that can help us. So just to, to overall why the data visualization is, is important is it's important to uncover the insights. And it is also important, once you uncover the insights, it, data visualizations helps to communicate the message well. So that's why creating a re good data visualization is important. It's not only making the data accessible, it is the Im importance is to communicate well. So when we could talk about the data visualization and the communication, it's, um, it's, a, it's a mixture of art and science. So in this session, we will look at a bit about the science and also a bit about the art side of the data visualizations. So let's look at the science behind the creating this effective data visualizations which can communicate well. So for that, let me quickly talk about a bit about human brain. Any, well, this is something I would have uh, asked in a live session is like if anyone read the book. So if you are somebody who read the book thinking fast and slow, it's, it's a great book. I would totally recommend again. It explains about the about the brains, like system one and system two. So how it works is, for example, if you look at this picture, if you look at this slide, what we have is we have a man screaming or shouting and do the other thing. And on the right, we have a math equation. So whenever we see that, we immediately know that man was screaming and shouting, but there is no way I could like, well, some people can, but I couldn't do the, that maths calculations like a bit in second. That is what the visualization gives you. Math is art, visuals are easy. When you give your end users two sheets of say for past week it, with, the, with the sum at the end, that's difficult. But if you just give them a, a bar chart explaining various products and with a bar, that is easy to read. And that happens because of the system one and system two. Because in the system one, we, it's fast. We can read it quickly. And system two is where we talk about this maths. Like, you know, we, we can do it, but we have to be conscious. We have to be, we have to do some maths to be able to process the whole situation. And that is because of the 
how our human brains are. It's like we have like, you know, iconic and short term and long term memory. And so basically how our brain de designed is we can do visual processing. We, because of how the brain is like, a, we can do the 70% of human brain is for the visual processing. That's why we can we can see the visuals well compared to doing all the math equations and everything. And that's when creating the better visualizations makes it better for us to understand. So before we look into how we can observe the patterns, let's have a quick look about how actually visuals can fool us. Because if we don't do right visualizations and how human brains can interpret completely differently and that can fool us. So, and this is, um, so this is one example I have. I have, uh, I have a link underneath which explains where, the, where these visuals come from. So probably that explains all about it. But what I want here is to just to have a bit of interactivity. Can you please go on to this page? And um, if you go to this URL, and can you please respond? Like, you know, what do you think? What do you think about that visual I see or I show on the screen? And uh, yeah, whenever I present, I should be able to see your responses. Looks like they haven't received any responses. So I also drop the link in the chat for uh, the ones who can just easily click it. Thank you. Just for the wait for that. Okay, I'll just move on and probably we'll go for the next. I could probably see more. So, so what I want by considering the time, I just want to move on. So what we have here is we have a visual um, talking about small companies and the large companies. And when we look at this visual, what we have is like, you know, just by looking at it is like a, the total is doesn't actually add up to 100%. And the small portion is 56%. So, but like, you know, if I don't give that explanation, you immediately look at it, okay, the darkest blue shade is is the big percent. And we don't even like, you know, most of the times we don't do the ma math, we assume it's 100%. So it's pretty easily that can fool us. And I have one more here. And again, if you if you go to the, to the one, yeah, we missed the 2%, good. Um, <laughs> it's a pie chart. Uh, we have, um, if you go to the next next one, we have another example um, that explains, like, you know, what what could be wrong with this visual. I'm gonna give you a minute to type and, and my responses to receive. Yeah, colors. Good point. Very good point. Yes, that's that's exactly what I wanted to highlight. So yes, color scales doesn't make sense, and also the size of the data bars is is like a. And also there's something we could also talk about is the amount of data they are showing on this on this slide. It's like there is a lot of data, and the color scales, the kind of colors they are using, it's it's not actually explaining a lot and the and the sort order and like th there are various things that you could you could talk about this one and but it, like you know if you don't have that explanation next to it it can fool us so this is and also they have one last one again if you go back to the to the next question on there very good point. Why not split into multiple visuals? Exactly. When you have that much data, it's good to have actually 
split into multiple visuals. So I have one more example just to get a bit of interactivity. So what is what uh, what is this visual lying about? What do you think? Y axis split. Yes. Doesn't start from zero. Good point. The colors. Yes, exactly. So when we look at this, when we look at this, uh, this example, the the difference between 1500 and the 425 it's like a, because the axis doesn't start and the split is doesn't actually makes a lot of sense and the colors so there are various things that we could talk about this one but like if the same visual if you actually starts from uh, y axis starts from zero it shows it differently so uh, so that that's the that so that's what it says is like, you know, how quickly our our brain can interpret visualizations. And when we are actually looking at this visual as there is something wrong in it, we can see problems. But just imagine, imagine these visuals appearing on a dashboard between so many other visuals and the business user is just looking at one thing then it can actually look like, you know, it, it can fool us very massively. So that's when creating the data visualizations and finding those patterns and creating those patterns is and uh, creating our visualizations the way by thinking how humans can interpret this, whatever we are producing on a dashboard or a report page, how human brains can interpret. By thinking about that, we can actually create better data visualizations. So that's when um, um, my that brings me to my next topic, which is the just all principles for the data visualizations. So what just all principles helps us for the data visualizations is, is the patterns. For example, when you look at this, what do you, what do you see when you look at that? Well, I, sh I would, ex you, we immediately look at a triangle. And uh, not only that, like, you know, if you look at the, this, people can recognize objects even when there are parts of them are missing. That is about just all principles. Even though there are some parts of that missing in the in that object, we can still, as, we, as humans, we group things. And that is all about just all. Just all means it's a unified whole. And um, as, a, as humans, we like to group stuff. So how we do that is we see the patterns. And uh, when we see the patterns, we like to group those patterns into, into one group. And, that, and that's how we look at the, whatever we are seeing, that's how we look at it. That's how our psychology, that's how our visual perception works. And um, that visual perception is very, very useful when we're talking to the, about data visualizations. So before we look into how this um, visual per per perception helps us with the data visualizations, let's look at what Gestalt's principles are basically talking about. It talks about similarity, proximity, closure, revelation, common fate, and figure and gram. And when it coming to the um, data visualizations, all these principles are very, very useful. So for example, what we have here we have a grid with, uh, with some circles. And when I just color some of those circles, what we are show seeing here, what we did is I colored every other column and immediately we have, have two groups. We are looking at, before we saw one group and now because we colored it, we are looking at two groups. And this principle is called similarity. And this principle actually comes quite handy when it comes to the visualizations. For example, if you look at this, so this is one big wide long table where we are talking about fuel prices. And with in this one example, if you follow the similarity rule, ignore the colors because I intentionally wanted it to be bold. But what we are doing is 
in the previous example, when I just show like this, what we are, what am I saying is, okay, fuel prices over the time series. But what I have there, I have two types of fuel prices. But when I add a bit of color, when I group them by using color, now it makes, it stands out. I have diesel and petrol. So that is what the similarity, when we are creating the data visualization, try to group the things which are similar. That way, the, to the end users, you are helping by however you group it. But in this case, we are using the color. So we, use, we can follow the similarity principle and we can help when we're creating the data visualizations. We can, we can think that way and group the, group the data which are similar. And the next one is proximity. So for example, if you look at this, what I did before we had two groups. If we started with one group with all gray dots, and then we added a bit of color, which made it into two groups. And now what I did is I added a bit of um, a proximity, a gap between space between first two columns and the rest of them. That way, what it brought me is by adding that little bit of proximity, it it is again made my whole set into two groups. And within those two groups, I have two other groups. So that is what the proximity does. And this is again also quite useful when it comes to data visualizations. Let me quickly jump into a report. So what I have, when we talk about proximity and we all are already very familiar with the proximity because we see bar chart is one good example when we talk about proximity. Just by adding a bit of, um, a bit of gap between things, we talks, uh, we can see like, you know, we have axis on the, in the bottom and we have the ears and by having those bars between tuck to each other, that's how we see the, the proximity. We'll, we'll slowly come into more examples about it. And uh, bar chart is one good example when it comes to proximity. So what I, what I wanted to say here is like when you're creating your data visualizations, whenever you're creating your, your dashboards and the report pages, think about the proximity because that tiny bit of space you add, even on the bar charts, when you had, when you have more legends, like, you know, your legend has more categories in your bar chart or anything, make sure you have that extra space. If you don't have that extra space, then it's kind of, you know, you, your users won't interpret them as different groups. So if you are adding extra space, so whenever you're creating a visualization, whenever you're creating a report page, think about the proximity. Is the, do I need the space or do I don't need the space? Because as humans, we, can, we try to group them differently. And the next topic, next principle is the enclosure. So to the same one, this, to the same block, by adding a little bit of border around it, again, we are making two groups. Here, we don't have the proximity, we don't have the space in between, but what we have here, we added a border. Again, we have two groups. First two columns comes under one group and the rest of, the, rest of it comes in the, another group. Again, this comes very handy, very important when you're creating, when you are looking at the data visualizations. So let me show you, one example here. So what we have here is, it's what we're doing here is we are adding an enclosure. So if you can see, what I have is I have two sets of, this is a one report page, but having a bit of space in between this block and this block, what I'm saying is this is one group and that is another group. Me being adding this, ex, this extra space is helping me to identify that. And then what I did is I added grouping. So what I did is I added a little bit of background around this all this set of visuals. And then I added more background, another background over here. So even though without any labels and a lot of description, again, this is not a great example when you wanted to, to do this one. But what basically this gives me is like a, by adding that, of, that grouping, it just explains without any labels. With it, it kind of explains. Okay, they belong. They are separate. They becomes two different groups. And by adding labels and things, we can make it better. 
So the next one. Okay, let me. I didn't start with the right slide. And the next one I want to talk about, the next principle I want to talk about is revelation. So we added border. And uh, in the previous one, we added border and that made us give us a group. But what we can also do is we add border by including the space. So this way, what we have is again, we have two groups. And but what we are doing is we are grouping it in a way, including the space in between. So again, when we talk, when we talk about this revelation in in Power BI or like you know, it, it's not only Power BI. It it is comes to the every other example. Let me just open this. So what we're doing here is we have different set of visuals, but what we're doing here is we have space, we added a bit of proximity, and we also add border around it. But what we are what we are explaining in here is by adding that little bit of color, so that is one way we are grouping, and we are also grouping based on the size. So we are using color and size to show the similarity. And then we're using the border to, to group them into one side, one group. So that way we are, we are kind of telling users, okay, this thing belongs to one group and the other thing belongs to the other group. Again, we don't have any labels to explain what we are talking about. But what, even though we don't have any labels, what we are doing is just by using a bit of colors and space and also the how close they are together and uh, which group they belong. We are kind of enforcing that grouping based on the patterns that we are using. So here, there we are using the, that's how the revelation, revelation kind of helps us to talk about how it, how it works. And the revelation is not only with the, with the, um, with the space and the grouping, but it also, it helps with the size. So that's what we saw in the example just now is like a you can use color, you can use space, you can use border and you can use size to group them together. When you are talking about when you don't have, of course, having labels and everything is the best practice, but not every user when they're just looking at the, an example, they don't see it as um, immediately they don't read all the labels. Immediately what they see is they see the color, they see the which group they belong to, because as humans, we immediately interpret that one. And then we look at the overall, the enclosure, and then we will also look at the space. So whenever you're designing a data visualization, just think about all these things, like you know how we are grouping, even though we don't group properly, the, the as a user, we group them. So maybe it's when we are designing it, if we automatically, by considering that, if we group it, that way we are telling a better story. We are, our visualization becomes more effective. So the size is another thing which also impacts on. The next thing which also impacts on the visualization is a common fate. So which direction, so for example, if you look at this one, what, what's happening is, this set of data on the left is moving one direction and the set of the data on the right moving in another direction. As a, as a user, when it comes to the data visualizations, for example, if you look at this one, those two lines, if you ask the users which two categories are doing, are doing same, we will immediately say the categories, which is the blue and the darker gray, which are C1 and C2, they are doing the same and the C3 is going down. So immediately that's what, I, that's what we see. We don't see the, um, the little difference we have when, when we had, there is a little bit of difference in this gray. We need to spend a tiny bit more time to, to figure out that. So as a human, how we do is we just look at it. Okay, that's a common fate. Those two are doing same and this one thing is going down. 
And here we have only three categories. When we have more categories, and uh, as a human, when we have this kind of trend lines, trend line is great example, but like at the same time, it can be misleading because as humans, we are looking a pattern. So the situation like this, that's when we need to think about, do we have to use a different visual? So I think what I'm trying to say here is, because we anyway try to group things, whenever you're designing something, look at it in a way, how we gonna group this. This particular visual, when I'm looking at it, how I'm gonna group. I'm gonna group those two in one group, and the other one in another group. Is that's what I want my user to be interpret. If that is not how I want my users to interpret the data, then that's not the right visual to choose. So that is another principle that we can follow when we're creating the data visualization. The other principle is the focal point. The focal point is like, as you can see over here, we have, again, we are made, we made our grid into two groups. One group belongs to gray circles and the other one belongs to the one red circle. With no point, we can we cannot miss that one. And the focal point is something not only can be done by using the color, but it is something can be done by using the size. So when it comes to data visualization, that is something we need to, to remember is how we can use color and the size to address our focal point. And when we say focal point, it is the attention where our, we want our user to put their attention into. So for example, if you look at this a table like this, again, may not be a good practice to have a really long table like this, but what you want your user to look at that one set, one element, then that is your focal point. And a better story is if this is what user want, and that is what you want your user to address, then use the focal point principle. Make sure you highlight your focal point. And this fo focal point is not about only one table or one dashboard. A focal point can come handy in various cases. For example, what you want to talk about is, for example, if you take our current situation, if you are talking about COVID-19 and uh, your focal point is to talk about number of cases, not nothing else, but but only the number of cases. You don't you don't want to care about how many recovered or how many died. But your focal point is number of cases. What you can do is, even though you have all those metrics lying down on your report, you could choose one color to highlight the number of cases. That way, you can address that. So that is where the focal point comes from. And and uh, you can you, you can follow that principle in your data visualizations. And the next thing which I want to talk about is this doesn't always um, come very handy when you're creating your reports in Power BI, but um, it is very important to address is to use the foreground and the background. What is your foreground and what is your background? So for example, so this is kind of comes under color principles as well. But the principle is basically foreground and background. If you look at this one visual, what we have here, we have the title we're on a black title on a very dark background. So and the legend is like, you know, you can't even see it. There are colors I can see, but I have no clue what that is saying. So that is where the focal point comes handy is like, you know, sorry, not focal point, foreground and the background. So foreground and the background principle is like, you know, when you want to uh, always remember when you're creating a data story, when you're creating a data visualization, what is your foreground and what is your background? By considering these principles by just start, we can do a, like really a lot of like, just by considering these five, um, six principles that we talked about, similarity, proximity, closure, revelation, common fate and figure ground. Whenever you're creating your data visualizations, if you consider these points, then it can it can change your visualizations massively. And um, when we follow this, these principles, when we think about these principles before we're creating a, a dashboard, your dashboard looks a, a clutter-free. And uh, so I would totally recommend um, 
about, about this uh, Gestalt's principles. I actually have more examples to talk about, like, you know, how each one and how we can get there. But by considering the time, I'm not going to talk about all those things. But uh, maybe some other time I'll I can I will be able to talk more into like, you know, how this just all these principles and how we can follow them and how we can make it um, useful for us. But quickly, I want to cover one topic and um, and then this is just um, talking about what visuals to choose. So we have various types of uh, data types available in our data and choosing the right visual is very, very important when it when it comes to the better data visualization. We saw about the principles which can, which can help us to lay out layout and what to align, how to group. But when you don't choose the right visual, it's it's not going to be useful. So these are some examples, some references I would leave you with. Um, so one thing I would totally recommend is this is my favorite, favorite one, and I use it all the time, which is data to whiz. So what I lo like about data to whiz is um, you have various. So it starts with what type of category. For example, you have categoric and in here you have how many variables you have. So, for example, you have more than two variables and then how you you can hover over and see like, you know, what kind of data you have. And then you can see, for example, if I want to put it on a heat map, it gives me a bit of information about heat map. But what I really, really care about is the is the common mistakes bit. So there are so many visuals available, but make sure we, you don't use the visuals that can fool you, like, like you know, that can fool the users. So having the this bit of information, even though you know what could go wrong, just going to this reference, it kind of it, it refreshes your brain like, a, oh, when I'm using the heat map, color palette is important. And like every single thing, pretty much all of them has that kind of extra information, like, you know, what are common mistakes you could do? And there is like a, you know, you can even have like a stories and things. So this is something I would uh, totally recommend when you are um, when you're creating the data visualizations and um, so I'm just gonna quickly go to well this bit so uh, the few things that I wanted to highlight is a good design automatically speaks out so this is something I've presented in one of the in Belgium and when you create some really simple designs it automatically gets attention so a data visualization is important is because that is the way you can communicate well. So always create something that is actually worth consuming. When it's as whatever the effort you you put into, if the, at the end of the day, if the, your data visualization or your report or your dashboard is not by, used by the users, that means it's a failure. So make sure you create something which is worth consuming. And um, you can create some really amazing data visuals just by following the just all principles and also by understanding how as a human we interpret what we see on a piece of paper on a on a screen or things. So just think about how we interpret data, how we see the uh, visuals, how we group things. And that's how the user is your user is going to group as well. So just think about it and you can create better visualizations. We all can create better visualizations. So on that note, thank you. Um, not, I'm sorry, I overran a tiny bit. Um, maybe not tiny bit, a bit longer. But uh, yeah, if you have no any questions, uh, please uh, ask me. And um, yeah, I will I will send you these slides and um, I'll stop sharing. So I could see the chat window if there are any questions. And um, yeah, please, um, please get in touch if you have any questions related to the session or anything. And on my blog post, uh, on my blog, there is a portfolio session, a portfolio tab, and um, I have various Power BI examples there. So hopefully that can give you some inspiration about creating the some visualizations. They may not be the best visualizations, but some inspiration. So yeah, that was my super quick 
one. But yeah, any questions, anyone? Um, well, I'd like to say, uh, Preti, uh, it was a great, um, a great presentation, a great insight. I, I'd love the, uh, the the website you showed, uh, the last one, the, the database. Yes, it's, really it's, great. it's yeah. a great website. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and um, um, I'm not sure if you, um, uh, I uh, joined a bit late because I had uh, to get the kids uh, into bed. Um, um, did you mention uh, Stephen Few, for example? Uh, his, his website, Perceptual Edge? Is this Stephen Few? Uh, no, I haven't yeah. mentioned Stephen Few. Okay. Yeah, Stephen Few is uh, obviously another great. Um, he has some great, great examples also uh, of, of improving yeah, uh, data visualizations. Yeah. Exactly. Of, of, I mean, there are so many. There are so many uh, web. Um, people who are there that you like, you know, there's plenty of information out there that you could see. But like at the end of my yeah. slides, there are a couple of references that um, that you all could play, go to. I, I'll share the slides. Um, yeah, but great, um, I think yeah, when it comes to data visualizations, from my point of view, like you know, when you every day to day, when we see the many data visualizations, just by following a few tiny principles, you can make them better. Like, you know, just like by following the default visuals we have in the Power BI, but just arranging them nicely, grouping them nicely, using the right colors makes them a lot better, even though without we using the amazing data science. Yeah, yeah, too. And there's actually a question in, in chat. And I'm, I'm not sure if you saw okay. it. Yeah. Um, Um, is there anywhere that discuss or highlights the dark patterns, something that we can use to protect ourselves? Um, I've seen a blog post somewhere. It talks about, is this a good idea to use the dark pattern or not? Even though I do use it sometimes when I'm playing with open data sets, I don't actually do it with my clients because it's so misleading. And um, I'll find out. I'll dig out the blog post and um, I'll probably give it to Nikki and he could pass it on to you, Richard. But yeah, when, I don't uh, remember. That's perfectly yeah. fine, yeah. We will, uh, we will make sure of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there are no uh, further questions, um, then I would like you to thank you very much, Patty. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes, that's my blog. That's my yeah, blog, that's and it. that should be a portfolio session uh, tab if you go a bit further down, and um, and that has some Power BI examples. Good to see. Okay, pretty. Thank you. Right. So thank much. you so much. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs>